okay, so this is going to be more about Harry and Meghan, uh, Archie a little bit, and the Queen. So be pretty good. Let's uh, see how it goes. I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like it. If you have subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on. Okay, so the big news has been is the Queen has finally met Lilibet and Archie again. So we're going to do a reading here to see how it went. We'll just throw a full cup across and uh, see how the cards turn out. I'm doing this from my hotel room in uh, Bordeaux, and I'll be leaving here soon. And so this is kind of a weird setup because there's someone here that doesn't want to be on camera. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so we'll see how this works out today. Uh, we're going to talk about the Queen meets a little bit for the first time and uh, she gets to see Harry again. So I hope all this is working out. I can't really see what the arrangement is doing. So uh, we'll just give it, I'll just give it my best shot. But um, the question is, uh, the Queen got to meet Lilibet and Archie again, Lilibet for the first time. Uh, we had that uh, meeting at Buckingham Palace. I guess. I'm not sure exactly where they got together. Uh, it's been hard to keep up with the news. But um, I'll throw a few cards on that. But you know the routine. Before I do any of this, let's have just a moment of meditation. You're going to have to figure out what you want to meditate about, okay? So, let's see what the cards tell us about that meeting between the Queen and the kids. How's Harry getting along with Meghan? How's Meghan getting along with Harry? How are they all getting along with the Queen? And I'm sure she was thrilled to see those babies again. So, the Queen finally getting to touch and hold a little bit. That should have been fantastic. I hope this is all filming correctly, because if it's not, I'm sorry, you're just going to get a kind of a crooked video. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's have uh, six cards, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the signifier card for the queen and um, and her meeting with little bit Archie for the second time or for another time, and uh, how all that went along. So the uh, circumstances of that meeting. The signifier card is, ah, so that's pretty interesting. So this is the Eight of Cups. The cups are of compassion, passion, emotions, and having to leave something behind of a lot of emotional value. That sounds about right. The Queen um, knows that she'll be leaving behind those uh, beautiful babies. Uh, the Sussexes, I'm sure, are sad about all this uh, compassionate situation that's going on. So that's the signifier. But what is it challenged by? It's challenged by, ah, the Page of Cups. Again, more compassion, more emotion. And the Page of Cups is, you know, he's the weakest of the court royal uh, cards. And so he's the fellow that brings an idea to court. But at this page, you see there's a surprise in that cup. So could there be some compassionate uh, little message that came out as part of that meeting? Perhaps, because that's the challenge to leaving something behind. The base of that reading, then, is the Queen of Swords, the Queen herself, showing her truth, justice, rules, and law. She's here at the base of the whole thing, guiding uh, this uh, family th towards the future of uh, what's going to be for them. Okay, the past of that reading, of course, is having been left out in the cold. That covers everybody. It's a perfect card to get because pinnacles are value. And this is the Five of Pentacles. These uh, show two folks who want to go in out of the cold, but they're kind of passing by. So could this be Meghan and Harry, perhaps, uh, looking and seeing that, that, you know, that comfort that they want is right there within reach. Um, and, but that's in the past because what they've done now, they have reunited with the Queen. And I have no doubt that they've all been in touch 
through video conference uh, before this. Now, the sky this reading, ah, nightmares. So truth, justice, rules, and law, that's what swords are. And the nine of swords are nightmares. So um, it tells us that uh, what's ahead of these folks is a difficult time, okay, difficulties. The um, a likely outcome of this whole thing, though, is very good because these are wands. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement, and the four wands are smallish celebrations. So we're talking about a smallish celebration. That's what we had here, whether it was the Queen's Jubilee, in light of the um, uh, those royals getting back together. It's a small step towards something bigger in the background. So that's appropriate. So now let's see what four more cards um, we could pull out to finish this off. I'm just going to take them right off the top. So the very self of that question uh, regarding the Queen's uh, meeting with the kids and Harry and Meghan in the future. The uh, self of that question is, again, uh, emotional, compassionate, four cups, being offered something that you don't really want or maybe there's not enough of. Okay, so that's the signifier card. The uh, environment that that's in, moving out of troubled water. So that's perfectly right. Truth, justice, rules, law, that's swords. And moving out of troubled water is telling us that that's what's happening here. They're moving this issue onto something uh, better. The hopes and the fears for this, uh, the knight of swords. So the knight is a fighter of the royal court. Swords, truth, justice, rules, and law. And this knight, and I'm going to say this is Harry, so he's fighting to, uh, to bring forth his truth, justice, rules, and law in the mix of all of this. And then the final outcome of everything with this ace of wands is a wands are forward movement, uh, actions, plans, and this is a great big plan to move things forward. And I think that's exactly right. So to recap, uh, we said, uh, what is the signifier of this meeting? Well, we've got the uh, eight of cups, and the eight of cups is leaving something behind of emotional value. The queen certainly will be leaving behind her beloved family. And uh, Harry and Meghan will eventually leave that celebration and go back, and Harry will be missing his family, I can tell you for sure. The... Um, Challenge to that, then, like I said, was this page of cups, which is a, a message, uh, a small surprise uh, in a compassionate message. That's the challenge to this. The base of the reading is the queen herself. I hope this is in the camera. Is the queen herself um, uh, holding up her truth, her justice, her rules of law. And then the past of this reading is being left out in the cold, and that can only be Harry and Meghan. The uh, top of this reading shows us the Knight of Swords, which is a nightmare, which this whole thing has been. And the likely outcome are smaller celebrations towards something bigger. Then we say, what was the very self of that question? Well, it was the uh, Four of Cups, which is having something which isn't really what you, everything that you want being offered to you emotionally, compassionately. And the um, environment that it's in is moving things out of troubled water. And that's exactly what's happening right now. And then the hopes and the fears is that Harry can take his truth and fight for his justice, I presume. And then the sky, uh, the likely outcome of the whole thing with this Ace of Wands is a great big plan to make this work. So I think this is a perfect reading for a difficult situation. Hope you liked it. Tell me what you think. Well, I don't know. What did you think about those cards? Do you think they were good? Do you think it was wrong? Did I read the cards correctly? You tell me. Make a comment below and tell me what you want to hear next time, and I'll try to get that to you out. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So this is one of my all-time favorite uh, decks. So this is the Smith Weight uh, Tarot Deck, the Centennial Edition. And um, there's two boxes here, and I'll explain what happened. Is uh, when I was ordering uh, uh, this uh, deck, um, I think I think it was Amazon. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it wasn't clear that that one of the things I was ordering was just a deck of cards, and the other thing I was ordering was a commemorative set. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about them separately. So the cards themselves are terrific. So these are, as you may have heard me say, if you've watched some of my videos and watched me use these cards, uh, these cards are the um, supposed to be the uh, most true to the original artwork of Pamela Coleman Smith. This is her initial, Pamela Coleman Smith. Uh, th these are the closest to her original artwork or interpretation that she and um, and uh, uh, Wait uh, came to agreements on for the way they would be depicted. Before I turn these over, I'm going to tell you. So one of the things I love about cards is when you, there's something special you can use the cards for, a special way you can identify with the cards that's only secret to you. Maybe I shouldn't like that, but I do like that. For instance, uh, these cards, you can tell from the back of these cards whether they are upright 
or whether they are inverted before you flip them over. And here's how. In this uh, little um, flourish here, uh, it's almost a rose in a rose. It reminds me a little bit of the Tudor rose, but it's, it's not quite that. But uh, if you are looking at this card, the back of this card, and you see this little leaf is, is sort of pointing in front of this signature, then you know that this card, when you flip it over, is going to be upright. However, if you see that the leaf is pointing behind the signature, you know that this card is going to be inverted. So see, at quick glance, it's not very obvious to you. But once you look at it for a minute and you know that secret, now you know what's going to happen when you turn this card over. So let's use an example. This one is pointing um, before the signature. So we can see that this card is in the upright position. This one is pointing after the signature, and you can see that it's in the inverted position. So, so there you go. Now, the cards themselves are great. I mean, I love the coloring of the cards. They've got kind of a, a grayish, um, a brownish gray overtone, almost a misty, kind of a London fog kind of a feel to the overall. It's like someone painted the cards and then went back and did a treatment on them to make them look kind of, so I'm not, I don't know if that's how Pamela Coleman Smith uh, created the art. I haven't seen her original art for this, obviously. Um, I'm sure some people have, but, um, but that's what's great about these cards. It kind of gives them a built-in patina. It's not real, you know, it's fake, but it still makes them nice and mystical. And so uh, that's what's interesting about these cards. Now, the, uh, at first I was disappointed that I had ordered two um, sets of the same cards, but then um, I understood that it was a good thing, and I'll show you why that is. Okay, so now this is the commemorative set of the Pamela Coleman Smith uh, artist of the Rider Waite Tarot deck, uh, featuring the Smith Waite Tarot Centennial Edition deck, which is this. So uh, it comes in this amazing amazing container. I mean, I can't even really call it a box. It's, it's like a beautiful showcasing a lifetime of artwork by Cam Pamela Coleman Smith. And um, so it's really cool. And wait till you see how it works. So you open this treasure chest up and you've got this beautiful uh, finish here and you got wonderful little tabs where you can pull back the, uh, the covers and see what's inside. And what is inside is a, a pack of the cards uh, and in truth what's happened is um, these were the cards that were wrapped up inside this box and uh, these cards uh, came in that box but um, I got this first and so I wanted to use the cards so I opened it up and oh look at that and I don't like that this has to be tucked down in there so there's a couple things that aren't perfect but uh, so I took the cards out of here opened it up started using them and then the other cards came and I realized oh well I can make this a complete set if I put these in here what's in here of course, you have the cards, and uh, then you have a nice little bag uh, to keep them in if uh, if that's how you're going to keep your cards, and so many people do. But uh, I have just chosen to try to leave these cards in kind of a pristine condition. And then on this side is where all the treasure happens. The first thing you have is this booklet, The Artwork and Times of Pamela Coleman Smith, Artist of the Tarot, Tarot of the Rider Waite Tarot Deck by Stuart R. Kaplan and Lynn uh Arjo, I suppose. So this is who wrote this book. In this book, it tells you all about, uh, you know, not all about, but it's, 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 it's a very good information about Pamela Coleman Smith. It's a lot of her art that's not related to tarot and explanations of how that art came to be. I mean, this is just a fascinating book and I love it. I love it a lot. So there's that. The next thing that was in here, are, these are actually postcards. Okay, so these are postcards, and all of these are the art of Pamela Coleman Smith. So, uh, and then this book talks about these postcards and why they come to be, and they all have a very interesting uh, story. So, which I won't go into now, but if you think you'd like to know, you should order these cards. So, very interesting uh, stuff here. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, next thing you're going to get is you get some uh, larger pieces that uh, this is. Pamela Coleman Smith, who I understand like to be called Pixie uh, as a nickname, and she's a lovely person. This um, is uh, someone that she knew, a, a stage uh, actress at the time, and um, and there's even a little uh, message down here. The the name of this person is Mistress Page, and then you are a you are Mary, so am I. Ha ha, uh, Ellen Terry. So uh, I'm not sure now, but the the book explains all of this to you. 
Then you get, uh, this is an example of just some black and white work she done for, for, I don't know what it doesn't tell you on here, but it does tell you in the book. And then this is some more examples of what she might have done for playbills or uh, other ways. You know, artists have to make a living, so they use their talent of making art to uh, sell and, and do other things. So love, love, love everything that came with this. And... Um, Amazing. Now, the final thing, and I've, I've lost the little uh, ribbon, but also this uh, has a ribbon here that, that helps you pull everything out, which is so smart and so good. I don't know who thought of it first, but it's a great uh, use of that. And then you have here the actual uh, pictorial key to the tarot. So some of you may have seen me using uh, this book, which is the pictorial key to the tarot by weight. And uh, so this is just another uh, representation of that, but just in a different book. And it all comes in here. The one thing that you're missing here, I don't think the cards are in this book. No, the pictures of the cards uh, aren't in here, but it's terrific. Everything else is true to that first book. Uh, this one, however, which I bought separate from an uh, online bookstore, uh, does have uh, depictions of the cards in it, as you can see. So that's very useful. I use that all the time. So very handy to have. And then finally, like so many of these uh, decks, this gives you some uh, examples of some spreads you can use and how you might read them. And so everything, everything, everything about this um, this package uh, is exactly um, the best that you want to get in a in a in a gift. I've got, this is the one little misgiving here. Maybe I'll, I'll work on that later. But um, so nice. So that's been the tour of these cards. And I hope you've enjoyed it. You really make a big difference. Thank you.